Hey guys, I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds to jump on and we will be chatting about uh, COVID-19 and give you guys some updates and insights. I know you all are probably pretty aware of what's going on, but I really wanted to jump on and I shared it on our tribe page, but I wanted to do another iteration for all of y'all because I think it's super important. I was um, sent a, a really helpful resource a call from a doctor in New York. Hey, Evelyn. A call from a doctor in New York that was, uh, he is a pulmonary and acute care doctor in New York. In in his words, one of the premier hospitals in New York that has now been turned into a COVID-19 hospital. And he had a call with friends and family and it's public. It's not a reserved. So I'm sure it's fine if I share um, just the, the tips and his name is Dr. David Price. I'll put the actual link when all is said and done. Um, so I wanted to share some tips and some insights into that <clears throat> because I think that it is important for us to be informed, be super vigilant right now, understand that this has very dramatically transpired. Um, again, I know that you guys knew that, um, but I felt like I needed to just share this message. So someone is meant to hear it, um, to be very vigilant, but to not be fearful. Uh, and I got to tell you that after, you know, just so you guys know, I am definitely uh, not uh, you know, the woman of steel or whatever that phrase is, right? That I, I know uh, it is, I've heard that in the past. I, I clearly remember back in the day, um, when I say back in the day, it was a couple years ago, um, I was going through something and shared it with our clients and one of the clients, it was a physical thing, um, and one of our clients said, man, I'm so glad that you shared that because we see you as this strength and we see you as this like invincible person um, and it's good to hear that like you have vulnerabilities too every once in a while. Like, I'm sorry that you're going through it, but it's good to hear that you have vulnerabilities too. So um, I want to be real with you too and letting you know that I have my moments of anxiousness for sure. It's usually I feel anxious when I realize I've tried to just go look at an update and I've gone down a rabbit hole, right? And I'm like the preacher of protect your head space. And I still, every once in a while, have to catch myself and realize that I'm going down the rabbit hole. And so after the update on Tuesday, um, so just to so give you guys a little bit of background, I... I You've probably heard me a hundred times in, if you've been with me or followed me for a while in that I don't really watch the news. I don't keep up with it. Like something urgent's happening. Somebody will tell me. That's always been my like offhanded remark in the past. Obviously, this is something I have to be aware of and be very informed of. The resources that I go to, though, again, in a perfect world, when I am being mindful and protecting my headspace, I am only going to the CDC site, um, the task for updates, and then there's been a couple of good resources shared with me that are direct from doctors, right? So uh, I think protecting our headspace and not getting caught up in media is super important right now, more so than ever before. But we do need to be empowered and equipped with information so that, again, we can be vigilant and can be informed. So now that a couple of you have jumped on, feel free to share if you'd like. Um, and we'll, I'll share with you things that made helped me manage that moment of anxiety. Because if you had not heard, if you had not, for some reason, if you're not staying updated with the actual task force updates, as of Tuesday, um, it was a very much, very different tone. I think, you know, as they, they had, had been saying all along, do not, please do not post below any political comments. I will delete them. This is not what that platform is for. Um, but I, from what I am seeing, they were talking about getting a lot of the data and the statistics that are actually been happening over the weekend, going through that and making that decision as to what we do from now, whether or not they extend at the federal level the 14-day or 15-day period that it was at the time, 14-day, I think it was, um, and, and extend that on. And so they went from you know a position of wanting to get us all back on track to holy crap, excuse my language, I shouldn't have said it that way, um, but it, like this is a big deal. It is uh, more, it is affecting more. The numbers are, are higher than we anticipated. Whatever their reasoning was, they looked at the data and very clearly said, we get how difficult it is going to be, and yet this is what we need to do, and that is to um, request everybody to do the stay at home for another 30 days. They also said that the next couple of weeks will be the hardest week. Uh, hardest couple of weeks. They expect the next couple of weeks to be the peak. 
um, and then to level off. They expect that there are going to be a lot of deaths in the next couple of weeks. And I'm not passing this on to scare you or to create an anxiety of you in you like I had after listening to that for a little bit. And then, like I said, I went, it wasn't just that. I went down the water hole. You're going to have to bear with me today because... It is, you know, being at home, just like the mamas with kids all of a sudden. My dogs are my three-year-olds, um, but I got my water in hand, so hopefully I can keep them at bay. Um, they're a little extra crazy today. Um, my point being that um, it's important for us to know so that we aren't shocked. It's important for us to know so that we can start pre-framing our response and so that we can do our part and understand that there is so much that you can do. The next couple of weeks is a critical period of time and the next couple of weeks is where you and I as individuals get to have an impact. We get to, by our own choices, your choices, it doesn't matter what age group you're in, it doesn't matter whether or not you have a pre-existing condition, they now know for um, they now know with certainty that you can be completely asymptomatic and spread it. So regardless of how you feel, whether you're sick, whether you're not, whether you think it's a political thing, whatever the case may be, I don't think anyone at this point in time is still saying that this is just the flu. I think we've all evolved. I want to believe that we have all evolved. Our, our thought process around this as we've learned more, as we've seen more happening, that this is incredibly critical that every single one of us take personal responsibility for our own choices. And with that, like I said, I'm gonna share some tips on, you don't have to be fearful, but we do want every single person to be vigilant and be empowered with the right steps to take, right? especially over the next couple of weeks, but then carrying that on. One of the biggest things they've said is that if they pull back too soon with this stay at home um, request provision, depending on where you're at in California, it's a requirement. We're down to all essentials um, and essentials only. We've actually been there for a couple of weeks. Uh, if we don't all do our part, if they pull that back too fast, then it is very likely, if they respond too quickly with what appears to be a drop, then it's a, it's, it can be that it goes back up again. And we want to make sure that we get all the way through this, do the best we can to minimize the, the severity of the illnesses, minimize the severity of the deaths, and each and every person, you have to understand. Like, I cannot express that enough. I know I'm usually like, all the positives and all the everything. And I that is for another time. Because I can tell you, I still have my running list of all the good things that have come out of this season. But this is not the video for that. This is not the time for that. This is the time to say, hey, this is real. We all need to take it seriously. And we all need to do our part. So that includes staying at home. But let me go into what Dr. David Price was sharing on his um, call with his friends and family. I'll try and recap it and keep it to the point. And then if you want, you can, it's like over an hour, little, maybe an hour long. I'll put the link below too. But in order to prevent and do your part, first and foremost, you're staying at home. You are, if you're in California as of this week, they are recommending that if you are out and about, you are wearing some sort of face covering. They're supposed to come out with more guidelines on that. But from what I understand and what I've listened to based on the most recent update from the health, uh, uh, and I forgot the title name, at the state level, um, as well as the the county, Riverside, San Bernardino, well, Riverside specifically has also said uh, a couple days ago, uh, to start wearing face coverings. So you do not need surgical masks. You do not need N95 masks. I think I'm getting that one wrong too, but you know what I mean? You don't need those masks. Those masks, the healthcare workers that are in the facilities with potential COVID-19 cases or in the, especially the ones in the COVID-19 wards, they're the ones that need that kind of mask. All you need is to have, at least this is as of today, this is ever evolving, right? But as of April 2nd, Thursday, you want to just take that extra precautionary step. That's all it is in getting a face, um, something to cover your face. Now, I will tell you, and you'll hear in the um, the interview that I'll, or the, the call with Dr. David Price and his family and friends, that he is saying that you wearing a face covering isn't keeping you from COVID-19. And at the state level update, that was their concern too, is they don't want people to feel like just by covering your face, social distancing goes away. The main thing, according to Dr. David Price, in his opinion, as this was taped, his was taped about a week ago, again, learning all the time, right? 
was that the covering your face is really for you to be mindful to not touch your face. And it kind of gives other people that very real re reality and reminder that you're respecting the social distancing, that you're taking this seriously. And so it helps create that social distance because it keeps everything mindful. All right. Um, uh, Dr. David Price talks about these are the things for you to do, and that is to wash your hands and wash your hands frequently. If you have antibacterial soap, I know it's out. I know personally in our household, we don't have any, um, but washing your hands for a good 20 seconds. One of our doctor clients said, sing the birthday song. And I was like, that's a great, great way to realize it and remember and make sure that I'm washing my hands. So I sing happy birthday to Jesus every time I wash my hands now. And that, you know, two, two wins, right? But it makes sure that I'm washing my hands. So Dr. David, David Price talks about wash your hands before you need to touch other things. Like you don't have to be afraid to the point where you're not going out at all. In the state of California, you do need to stay home. But if you have to go to the grocery store, don't be fearful. Wash your hands before you go in. Wipe down the cart at this point that is now being recommended. Wipe down the cart. Then get the stuff you need. Get back into your car. Wash your hands again. Use Perel. You, um... Obviously, you can't wash, wash unless you have one of those dry um, soaps in your car, but do something and clean your hands off. You get home, you put your groceries away, you get home, wash your hands, put your groceries away, wash your hands again. Like you just want to be continually washing your hands. The other critical, critical thing is that to not touch your face. And I got to tell you, I am so, I had no idea I touched my face so much until you don't, you're not supposed to touch your face and you know you're not supposed to touch your face and then you realize how often you touch your face. And so that's part of wearing that face covering according to Dr. David Price, the New York um, pulmonary and acute care doctor. And is to make sure, like that is the, that is the, in his opinion, based on what he knew of as of last week, that is the most common way to get the virus is by it gets on your hands or it gets on something and then you itch your face or touch your face or any of those things. Wipe your nose, whatever the case may be. So don't touch your face. We talked about wearing a covering, keeping that social distance, at least the six feet when you're out. Um, and then Dr. David Price, I'm going to tell you, he, and this was as of a week ago, he also talks about shrinking your circle. And that means within families too. He, he is saying on his call that I'll share that According to the studies in China, at least the information that we are getting, um, again, no political comments below. I will delete them. But that the the prevalence of the spread is actually within families, people not realizing that they're sick or staying in close contact. So even if it is family, you have you decide who is going to be your core circle over the next couple of weeks, the next 30 days, and you stick to that core circle. This is not the time to have your best friend come over and hang out because you've not seen her. This is not the time to, um, you know, go visit ancillary family members unless like they need something or and then you have to take precautionary steps. I know it sounds harsh, but it's only 30 days. And if it can save lives, that's what we need to do. Right. And so be super, super cautious with like Dr. David Price was saying that he has, I think it was his immediate family and his parents and they're all staying at their parents' farm and no one else comes in or out of that farm, right? They're all staying there and staying hunkered down through all of this. That is where he was talking about shrinking your circle and that the majority of the transmission is within families. Um, and then he was talking about what happens if you do get sick. So the likelihood, especially it is cold and flu season, if you get sick, even if you just think it is a cold, at this point, the recommendation from it from uh, Dr. David Price, and I have heard it from a couple others, but I'll share the other the research for Dr. David Price and and after I'm done with this video, um, is to treat it as if you have COVID nineteen, so that you don't accidentally create a spread for your family, right? Even your immediate family that is at home. And how you do that is he is explaining that you can be in the same house, even if you do have COVID-19, because this is a thing that I meant to mention in the beginning. This is impacting all age ranges. They are no longer saying that it's only elderly. The elderly are more elderly and compromised, severely compromised immune systems are the ones, unfortunately, that are dying from it. We don't want that for anybody at all, but understand that this is impacting perfectly healthy 20 year olds, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, 50 year olds, 
they're recovering. That is the difference, but it is a miserable experience in the end. You can expect to, so if you're at home, just so you know that like, again, not to scare you, but to be empowered, that it can impact anybody. And if you, so if you have a cold, you're to treat it like you have COVID-19. Good news is kids, they still can't figure it out. They think that they might, based on what I've understood from a couple of different resources, they think they could be carriers, but they do seem to have some sort of resilience for it. Um, So mamas, don't worry too much about your kids, but understand that your kids could be carriers and you wouldn't even know it. So you want to be careful and definitely not a time for them to play with neighbors, right? Um, So even if you get sick, first day or two that you're sick, you have a runny nose, you're coughing, maybe you're sneezing, whatever. If you don't develop a fever, this is based on Dr. David Price's perception of what he has seen at the COVID-19 hospital. If you don't have a fever within that first day or two, chances are it is just a flu. During the time where you're trying to figure that out, you treat it as if it's COVID-19, you isolate yourself in the house, you can be in the same house and not get them sick, you just have to respect the idea of social distancing, even in your home, if you feel like you're sick, so you don't accidentally give it to a spouse or a child or make a child a carrier, even if they're not going to get sick, sick from it. The um, So you put yourself in a different room. Ideally, you have a different bathroom. If you are coming out to get food, you wash your hands before you go out to get food. You get the food that you need. You, um, you know, clean the dishes, all of that. You wash your hands again, and then you go back into your bedroom. You stay that way until you know whether or not you do have COVID-19. Is you, if you do have COVID-19, there are, uh, in his details, and again, this was as of a week ago when he taped it, there are only about 10% that actually get COVID-19 need to go to the hospital. If you have a fever and you have aches, in his opinion, based on what he had communicated, which I'll share the resource, is that you, if it's fever and body aches, you don't need to go to the hospital. The other thing that has been pointed out too is that you do not want to take ibuprofen for the fever and the body aches. You wanna stick to Tylenol. Again, I'm not healing, I'm not a doctor. Find, search the resources, but I'm sure all of you have been sent that by now. By multiple doctors have said, do not take ibuprofen if you have the fever or the body aches. Stick to the Tylenol. If you do end up with any kind of shortness of breath, that is when you go to the hospital. And in California, again, check. I'm not sure if you have to call ahead at this point, but you definitely need to go if you have any kind of shortness of breath. Um, To ride out the COVID-19, if you're not one of the ones that is going to get shortness of breath or get incredibly sick. um, So let's say you have the fever, you have the body aches, but you don't have the shortness of breath, so you're riding out at home. During that entire time, According to Dr. David Press, it's gonna re- price. It's gonna really, really suck for the first five days. Like, really, this is not just a flu. No one wants to get it. That's why it is so important that you take do your part, right? For you, for your family, for your community. It doesn't matter if you're not gonna be the ones that it's gonna die from. It. You could get sick, and you could be incredibly, incredibly ill, and it's gonna really, really suck for the first five days. And then by day six or day seven, most people start to feel better. Um, And then as your symptoms decline, that's when you can start engaging again with your family. But again, check the longer version of his um, for the details. I'm just sharing information that I have put together that I found from different resources, right? Um, Let me look at, I'm looking down at my notes. Again, if you have any kind of shortness of breath, that's when you go to the hospital. Um, Also... So that was the recap on from Dr. David Price. Now, I will tell you this from various resources. This is happening, and to the extent in which someone has a healthy immune system is to the extent in which people are not getting it as severely. Those are the people that are asymptomatic, meaning they have it and they don't even know it, or they have it and it just shows up like a regular cold or a flu. They don't even ever know that they had COVID-19. Those are people with really high immune systems, people with compromised lower immune systems, which is as we age, we have a compromised immune system and or people that are, you know, recovering from cancer treatments or um, you have also heard uh, hypertension, uh, diabetes, a couple of other circumstances have been mentioned as well. But please understand those, what we have been hearing about those people, those are the people that are sadly, like it's horrible that they're losing their life, but understand you don't have to be in one of those categories 
to get this and to feel like crap. And let me express this. This is what I've, you know, because I know I'm all sunshine and rainbows and following the positives. And like I said, I have a whole list of all the positives that have come out of here. But let me be real with you. And this is how I explained it to my family. If someone in your family gets sick, gets the shortness of breath and has to go to the hospital, they will be by themselves. They will be miserable. They will be uncomfortable and they will be by themselves. I get emotional because I can't even imagine one of my kids being by themselves in a hospital. And as great as the nurses and the doctors are, they aren't a mama. And mamas, you can't be there. So do your part. Stay home. Get healthy. Take care of yourself. That is the next piece. Got to control myself. All right. So (laughs) this is our new normal for a while, at least the next 30 days. And the whole social distancing thing might have, will probably have, I'm not going to say might, it will probably have some sort level of social distancing well after the 30 days to make sure we don't have a, you know, a second wave of it and what have you. So it's like doing the things, washing your hands and all this stuff that is going to be critical for the several months on end to be aware, to build these healthy habits. And what is so incredibly critical, and I cannot stress this enough and this has nothing to do with the fact that I am a health and fitness professional but I am so thankful I am because right now more than ever it is not about the way you feel in a bathing suit it is not about the way you feel in clothes although it sucks to feel uncomfortable in your own skin it sucks to hate shopping it sucks to not feel comfortable going to a beach or hanging out at a pool I get it because I've been there and that sucks too but you know what sucks more is being at higher risk to get this disease because you weren't taking care of yourself. That's what sucks more. That sucks a whole lot more, right? And I wanna tell you that it is more important than ever for you to be taking care of yourself. And it may, it may be harder than ever. Why? Because I'm also somebody that has battled depression, battled anxiety, battled isolation, all the things. That is who I used to be. That is who, what the things I used to go to for comfort was food and all the things. And I'm telling you as that person, it is the worst thing that you could do to yourself right now and to your family. Because right now, you taking care of you, I've always said, you got to put your own oxygen mask on first because think about it, you get on an airplane, you put on your own oxygen mask before you even take care of your kids. So you got to make the time for you, health, nutrition, whatever. That's still 100% true. But it is on such a more powerful level because if you aren't doing those things, if you give in to that feeling of emotional eating, if you give in to the feeling of isolation, you are creating more of an issue for yourself and your family. And I am sorry if you don't like me speaking that truth, but it is the truth and it is my duty and my obligation to share that. I am putting something together that's going to give you more detail about nutrition. If you want some information on it, I'm probably just going to do another live on Saturday. I might turn it into something else just so I can make sure I stay on point and all the things. But um, if you want to be a part of that, let me know. But immunity, your immune system depends on your ability to control your emotions, your level of stress. It depends on the foods you eat. I'll share some resources with you, probably on Saturday through a live, where I wanna make sure I get the doctor's name right. Dr. Hyman, who is a naturopath doctor who I followed for other reasons for quite some time, he will tell you sugar, packaged, processed food is decreasing your immune system and making you more susceptible. It feel it feeds the, infa- the, the viruses, right? So making those choices right now is the worst thing you can do. And I get that stress levels are uniquely high. Anxiety is uniquely high. It would be so much easier right now, more so than ever before, to get into the rabbit hole of stress, anxiety, worry, emotional eat, sleeping in because you don't feel like doing it. And it is never more important than right now to take care of your emotional mindset, to take care of your nutrition and make sure you understand what that means because so many people have it wrong and to be connected and in relationship in community goes back to that emotional state and that ability to manage mindset, reduce stress. All of these things impact your immune system and physically moving You cannot just sit still. You have got to keep up the physical moving, right? I'm going to talk more about that on Saturday. This has already gotten too long, so I'll go through that, and I'll give you some very specific tools to use. 
get connected. It is harder than ever. So yes, I'm going to tell you, you need a coach. You need a coach more than ever. You need to be connected with professional accountability that's going to notice whether or not you're getting this stuff done and whether you're taking care of yourself or you're not. Because not only your health depends on it, your family health, family's health depends on it. Your community's health depends on it. Our ability as a society to fight this virus depends on you. Well, I shouldn't say it depends on you, not the entire community, but you are. You. This is the opportunity to rise above. This is the opportunity to say enough is enough, get control, rise above. I know it's hard. That's why you do not want to do this alone. You need to get connected. And of course, I want to help. But if you don't like me and I don't click with you or you don't click with me or whatever, totally cool. But get with somebody that can be there for you, knows what they're talking about, has proven to be able to do it for themselves and do it for others and will support you through this because it is so hard to do it by yourself in a good situation. Now it's even harder. All right. I love you guys. All of it is done with love and passion. If you think this was helpful, like, comment, share.